Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy times seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began account when he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me. And I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturer until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the, strict, the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we got to start reading from the book of Joshua, and I was reminded of a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, on a Monday evening, I got together with some friends and uh, even some Baptists from here in Montgomery County, and we all got together and we had uh, cigars and bourbon and had a great conversation. Uh, the Baptists didn't drink any bourbon, but they did smoke cigars, so it was good. We had a great conversation, and uh, a lot of very devout men who were there in that barn and one of the things that came up was one of the guys was speaking about his experience of conversion. He had a very profound conversion about four years ago. And now it's a tremendous struggle for him with his family. Because even though he has had a tremendous conversion in returning to the faith, his family seems to be drifting farther and farther away from the faith. I know this is an experience that is relatable to all of us, I imagine. All of us have had that experience. Here we are at daily mass. You know, we've had this uh, encounter with Christ and this desire to serve him. And yet it seems like so many people around us just keep falling further away. Maybe your children or your siblings or friends. Many of us have this experience and it's easy to get very discouraged. And that's what we talked about in this conversation. And I'm struck by that with this story of Joshua and the crossing of the Jordan River. Imagine what the people of Israel must have been feeling. They knew that the people of the land were much bigger than they were. The story from 38 years earlier, when the spies were sent out into the land, they said the people were like giants, and in their sight they were like mere grasshoppers. Also, the people of Israel would have remembered that for the last 38 years, they had been wandering because of their own sinfulness. They would have lacked confidence in their own abilities to take the promised land. The promised land was filled with many different people, and the Israelites were a small band of pilgrims from Egypt. They would have seen the walls of Jericho and their heights and thought, surely how can we possibly tear down these walls and conquer these peoples? And yet, 
God told them that He would give them the land and commanded Joshua to send first the priests carrying the ark into the water, parting the waters. Many of us don't realize that Moses was not the only person in the Old Testament to part waters. Joshua also did this, and later on, Elijah at the end of his life. But think about the scenario they were in, and think about the faith and the hope that Joshua must have had and the power of God to conquer the land and to tear down the walls of Jericho. I think in our age, it is important for us to have that same hope that Joshua had. Not just hope that God might give us eternal life, but hope here and now that just as Joshua went about conquering the land, so God will give us the power to conquer souls. St. Augustine once said about the conversion of a sinner, he said the conversion of a sinner is an even greater miracle than God's miracle of creation. Every conversion is by the hand of God. So we have to have faith. And I must confess that in my time here in Crawfordsville, I've thought about this very often. I've thought about Montgomery County as the promised land with many different peoples and many different demons. Every human heart in this parish and in this county is like a mini Jericho with walls built around it, various defenses and resentments. But we must have the faith of Joshua that through the power of God, we truly can conquer this county and this parish and win souls for Christ. We must have that faith and just as the Israelites led the way with the Ark of the Covenant, so likewise we must lead the way with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the new Ark of the Covenant. Renewing our faith, renewing our hope every day that God truly wants to bless us and wants to bring about great conversions in our time and in our county.